Hey, my name's Sonny from Off The Record Lounge and this is our mini-series called How To Folk Punk where we interview folk punk artists. And today my lovely friend Thomas will be interviewing Quentin Tremberth. Just a reminder, Quentin Tremberth recently released their new single, Warm Beer. Link in the description below. Stream it. Stream all their music if you haven't listened to them before. They are awesome, so let's get into it. Thanks for doing the uh, interview on behalf of Off The Record Lounge. That's all right. It's my pleasure. So if you're happy to, I'll just get into some questions. Yep, let's do it. Um, so how long have you been playing? Um, I've been playing guitar since I was about 11 or 12. Mm -hmm. um, just played in like crappy high school punk bands through high school and Perfect. then um, gave that up to play accordion in a folk band for a while mm -hmm. and then gave that up maybe three or four years ago and started writing the stuff that I write now on guitar again. Beautiful. Um, what, what attracted you to folk punk specifically? What drew you in? Um, I think I can pretty much put it all down to the fact that like I was writing a lot of sad music for a long time. I was really into bright eyes, which I guess got me towards the acoustic instruments. And, yeah. um, and then I heard some of the like positive folk punk stuff and was like, Oh shit, you don't need to write sad songs. You can write happy, exciting songs about good times. And that's yeah. kind of what drew me to folk punk, I guess. Yeah. And still have that same, still have the same depth of emotion, but it can be in different flavors. Totally, I um, I think that like every happiness or unhappiness has like its equal opposite. So if you're really happy, it's because you're not really sad anymore. And if you're really sad, it's because you're not really happy anymore. And so um. So they kind of go hand in hand. Absolutely. If you only feel mediocre sadness, then you're probably only going to feel mediocre happiness. And um, I think broke punk kind of visits the extremes of both, which is nice. Yeah, beautiful. Well, um, which of your songs would you say is a crowd favorite? Um, tea bags. People fucking love that song. T-Bags? Why do you think um, that is? Um, what do you mean? Um, why do I think that or why would it be the crowd favourite? Why do you think it, the, yeah, why is it the crowd favourite? What do you think draws people to that um, one? It, I think because it's got good lyrics. Um, the lyrics in the yeah. verses kind of talk about, um, like little specific things in a fun relationship. And so when people hear little specific memories that happens, they can kind of be like, whoa, I remember little stuff like that with my uh, romantic friend. And so people like that. But I think the main reason is it's just got a big shouty chorus and people like a big yeah. shouty chorus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so whenever I sing that song, you can see people are just like, oh, fuck yeah, we're gonna go get to yell along the chorus and who doesn't love that? <laughs> People love an excuse to get loud. Fucking A. Is that your personal favourite as well or do you have another personal favourite? Um, I think my favourite song's always just going to be the one that I'm writing at the time. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> Before um, all of this lockdown and everything happened, um, hmm. How would you describe the folk punk scene here in Oz? Um, pretty good. I guess I only started participating in it a few years ago, but um, shit like Hobo Fopo, which is a folk punk festival down in Tassie that happens every year, um, introduced me to a lot of Australian folk punk artists and friends and um 
Yeah. Considering considering it's a bit of a niche genre that you wouldn't really hear on the radio or at normal festivals, it's cool to see that there's folk punk artists in yeah. a lot of different Australian places. Kind of surprised me. Um, pleasantly surprised. Yeah. So I yeah. think that even even though there's not a huge amount of folk punk artists in Australia, the fact that there is a few in each state and probably way more than I know about is um pretty pleasant considering it's a, a yeah. niche thing and it can be pretty uncool at times. So it's it's thinly spread, but it's well spread. Spread widely. Yeah, totally. Um yeah. There's even a mad scene in Brisbane, which is really cool. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah. I lived in Brisbane for a year forever ago, and I thought the music scene there was um, pretty quiet, considering everyone moves to Sydney or Melbourne. But then to find all of these folk punk people there was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking everywhere, which is very pleasant. It's good for touring. You're always going to have a friend at the yeah. end of the drive. Yeah, absolutely. As long as there's one person in the state, then you're sorted. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Do you think it's diverse enough? Do you think there's enough diversity within the, the crowd and the people that go? And um, Diverse enough. I, I don't think anything could ever be diverse enough. Like adding a little bit more diversity to something is yeah. never going to be like a bad thing. You're not going to be like, whoa, whoa, wait up. <laughs> it's a bit too diverse. I, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that there is some diversity in the folk punk scene. Mm. Um, whenever I find out about a new artist that I didn't know, um, adding some diversity to the folk punk scene, I'm stoked about it. Yeah. It's still very much a lot of white dudes, folk punk. Um, so yeah, no, I don't think... I don't think it could ever be hmm. diverse enough. Yeah. Do you think yeah, there's... Diversity is something that's always going to be encouraged. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think there is something that's lacking from the scene that would be able to draw more types of people in? That's a good question. Um... Hmm. Chew on it for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. It'd be something good to brainstorm and um yeah. yeah. Totally. Excellent. Well, that's a good answer to a good question. If you have to think about it and you don't know right now, then that means that means we'll make a new think as well. So it's good. Yeah, it also means that I can't automatically think of examples of what we're doing for more diversity, which isn't the greatest. Um yeah. Probably shows that there needs to be more thought on it. Yeah. Excellent. This series is called How to Folk Punk. So are you able to share with us a moment that really sums things up for you? Or yeah. something that you feel yeah, totally. is unique to the scene? Yeah. I think um I think DIY is pretty important to folk punk. And I think that touring, especially in a DIY sense, is something mm. while not while not unique to folk punk, it's very um necessary to it because all of the gigs are DIY and DIY gigs you're not gonna get put up in a hotel or have um much of a rider or money to spend. And so you end up sleeping in your van or under the stars or in a friend's backyard. And I think that's pretty special and exclusive that you wouldn't get in a lot of other genres. Um, a memory that comes to mind is driving around my friend Chris's band um, in This Is A Robbery. We were doing an Adelaide show and um, we had two days to get there. It's about a 12 hour drive, 10 hour drive. So we yeah. drove halfway to the, um, the border of Victoria and South Australia. And we were like, fuck it, let's, let's stay here the night by this um, 
by this little lake pond in border town there was a barbecue area and we had a cook up and then we all put our foam mattresses and swags down in a um camping area had some drinks and fell asleep and then maybe like two or three a.m um the sprinklers all around us started up and just started spraying us with water so we all (laughs) we all got wet and jumped up and this is bullshit everything's saturated luckily enough there was some um orange parking cones around Mm. and we quickly grabbed them for quick stuck them over the sprinklers and um so the sprinklers were just spraying the inside of these parking cones for the rest of the night and uh we kept dry and went back to sleep and i think i think that's pretty folk funk yeah excellent that's a good one yeah um on the drive back from that trip we were supposed to get out of town early because we wanted to sleep in melbourne but um it took us forever. One of the band members was missing. And then when we did find him, he was eating rice paper rolls. And he was like, do these, do these have peanuts in them? My mouth's tingly. And we were like, yeah, dude, satay sauce is made of peanuts. So we, yeah, had, to take him to, so we had to take him to hospital um, <laughs> for his allergy. And we were like, we just want to get, we want to get home. We've got a gig tomorrow in Melbourne. And it was already like 5 or 6 p.m., which is a bad time to be leaving for a 10-hour drive. Yeah. But, um, but the people at the hospital were like, yeah, he's, he's doing okay now. And like, here's a list of hospitals between. Along the line. <laughs> yeah. If you need to stop at one. And um, so it got to like one or 2 AM and we're out in the middle of nowhere. And we were like, fuck this. We're all exhausted. We can't drive anymore. So we pulled over the, by the side of the road near a lake to sleep in the van but because of the lake, there were just so many mosquitoes that mm. instead of sleep, it was just six dudes in a van going, ah, slapping yeah. each other. Um, Back against the mosquitoes. Yeah, the mosquitoes were just bullshit. I think we tried to brave it out for maybe half an hour. And then we were like, fuck this, let's keep driving. So we yeah. were driving. I think we're getting into like some fucking town I haven't been to before, kind of New England highway area, like Wagga Wagga. Mm. And, um, and there's just this bad smell in the van, like um, very chemically smoky acid smell. And um, so we all like had our heads out the windows trying not to suffocate. Pulled into town, we went to a um, mechanic and he was like, yeah, this, um, this battery is like battery gas. And like, I hope you haven't been breathing it in. Yeah. Which we had again. And so we had to get the battery fixed. And um, that was a long trip home from Adelaide. Long trip to Adelaide, long trip home. And um, I think that kind of touring camaraderie of shit being really bad is really good in the same sense. It's really good to look back on. Totally, yeah. Yeah. And that kind of makes it better in the moment. You're like, this fucking sucks. But um, it'll make a good story. Yeah, three qualities of folk punk. Um, I think DIY is important. There's going to be like a lot of things you have to do from kind of recording yourself to playing shows because I think folk punk artists don't have a lot of money and all of these things cost money. So if you can do it yourself, that's a good quality or trait to have. Yeah, two more traits of folk punk. Um, I guess everybody's pretty friendly and inclusive. Um, I think the folk punk scene's pretty quick to jump on any like gatekeepers or non-inclusive people and tell them to fuck off, which I think makes it quite welcoming to people of all varieties. That's pretty, that's definitely a necessary trait of folk punk. Um, Third one, I think. can't think of the third one i guess the second one pretty much says that like no matter what you do it's gonna be okay yeah yeah unless you're an asshole yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mosh pits how hard do the folk punk mosh pits go compared to just regular punk pits um i'd have to say a little less hard but a lot more fun 
I like that. Um, yeah. Like that. You go to a punk gig or like a heavier genre and the pushing is a lot more insular. It's like, this is my energy and I'm pushing it out just doing my own thing. But in a little folk punk dance club area, it's more like the energy is um, contributing to a whole and you're just yeah. kind of dancing around with your friends. Um, yeah, I guess at a punk gig, you kind of jump off the stage and crowd surf on people you don't know. Whereas at a folk punk gig, there's only going to be like 12 people there. So it's just going to be your mates picking you up and putting you on their shoulders for 10 seconds. Do you have a, uh, do you have a favorite mosh pit story? No. No. <laughs> I just got reminded of a story by my friend. Um, <laughs> uh, there's an artist from the UK called Crywank who played in Sydney. And mm. um, when they played in Sydney quite a few years ago, I got to support. And, um, and there was a little mosh pit. I think I played a quiet song and everyone sat down for that. And that was a nice moment. I think yeah. any moment where... Um, where people are going to like sit down in a mosh pit is um, is sweet. It shows that it's not just all about the person doing whatever the fuck they want, that they have some respect for everything going on around them. Hmm. The thought that comes to mind with like mosh pit stories is um, last year in Indonesia with a Tazi band called the Dead Maggies. Um, they were on tour and I was going along just to take photos and video. Um, the Indonesian punks, they mosh hard. They have big circle pits and they're all like holding hands and dancing around. And um, all of them are smoking. And so I just remember the mosh pit being full of like tobacco embers. And I think in the like dark night, seeing people bump into each other's cigarettes and the embers flying around with people crowd surfing, that's a cool memory. Probably. Not too safe, but I don't think anyone got too hurt. Yeah. There's, uh, the last question I've been given, um, is there any chance that you have a guitar nearby and could sing us an improvised song about your most memorable night out? Yeah, I could try and do that. Excellent. So what was it? An improvised song about? About your most memorable night out or favourite night out. All right, I can try and do that. Um, uh, going to a friend's gig and I wanted to be their band. So I got up on stage, it was a pain Had too many drinks My friends told me that I was a pain The man in the big garden, I tried to jump on a friend's head He dropped me on my butt and then I had a sore butt for weeks And sometimes if I sit on it too long on a drive me. Beautiful. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, that explains why it's memorable because I remember it every time I sit down for too long. Is there anything else you'd like to mention or say? Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, Check out my music on Spotify and Bandcamp. I've got a band now and we've got an album recorded that's going to come out in a month or two. I'm already dropping some songs from that. Hopefully, by the time you're watching this, the Warm Beer music video will be out and there'll be a link below in the description maybe. Um, yeah, hopefully we get to have some gigs and you can come to a gig sometime. Yeah. Also, check out Jude Joseph. He's also on Spotify. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much for your time, man. It was a pleasure to virtually meet you.
that's what's cool to do. Um, I'll see you at the pub sometime. Awesome. Peace. Peace out, dude. Thank you. Yeah.